2021 Kia Sorento Review, another win. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Before the chip shortage and coronavirus pandemic upended the global economy, the Kia Telluride was a hard vehicle to find. With the world still feeling the effects of those crises, Kia's largest crossover is now an even tougher ticket to score, with dealers regularly marking up examples to take advantage of eager customers. The 2021 Kia Sorento is the much-needed complement to the Telluride, capturing most of that vehicle's appeal in a more manageable, affordable, and, hopefully, easier to find package. Alongside the award-winning crossover and the heavily revised K5 sedan, the heart of Kia's family-focused lineup is more competitive than ever. Automotive design ebbs and flows, and in the case of crossovers, it's swinging away from softer, more car-like designs in favor of tougher, more upright language. Like the brutal Telluride, the Sorento arrives at the right moment then, wearing chiseled sheet metal and its upright stance well. Kia neatly married the hard lines of its largest CUV with the more refined and premium-looking elements of the K5. The result, particularly with our testers Aruba green paint, is a handsome and modern take on the midsize crossover. The Sorento is something of a departure from its siblings in the cabin, retaining the same attractive and high-quality materials, but presenting them in a manner that feels more consistent with an SUV. The upright climate vents, which flank the HVAC controls and sit just below the optional 10.3-inch touchscreen, present a more rugged-looking center stack. A thick strip of matte wood trim joins the passenger and driver side, contrasting well with the silver-painted plastic, black leather, and piano black trim. Finally, our tester adds the poorly named rust color package, a $200 option that fits dark tan leather to the seats and door panels. It's a good color and certainly feels rich, but we're loath to willingly associate anything on a car with the word, rust. Colorful upholstery aside, the first row chairs are impressively comfortable, with ample adjustability and plenty of space for the folks up front. 10-way adjustability is respectable for the class, while three-stage heating and ventilation keep occupants comfy regardless of the temperature. You'll only find the butt chillers on the SX Prestige X-Line, though. In back, Kia offers standard second-row captain's chairs on all but the low-end LX and S trims. Accessing the second row is easy, with an ample footwell. And once settled, those chairs offer adequate long-haul support. Accessing the standard third row is surprisingly easy, too with the bottom of the bucket sliding and the seatbacks tilting forward, opening up a sizable aperture. We'd hesitate to regularly cram adults into those third-row seats, as there's just 29.6 inches of legroom and no real ventilation available, there are only two vents for the two rear rows. We made it back there, but our knees were in our chest. Still, competitors like the Ford Edge and Honda Passport lack a third row altogether, so we'll count that as a win for the Kia. The flip side is that with the third row up, there's just 6.6 .6 cubic feet of space. Even with the last row stowed, the Sorento only offers 29.0 cubes, 10 less than an edge and down substantially on the Passport, up to 50.5 cubes. Seating aside, the Sorento has a quiet and impressively refined ride, snuffing out wind noise and minimizing the sounds of the road. Larger potholes present little threat to the Sorento's overall comfort, with this crossover exhibiting impressive poise.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.